Hi, I'm Dave Hillowitz. So this video is about modular synths. In my last video, I covered how to set up a Eurorack case, and I even kind of played a little bit with my first module purchase, which is, of course, Mutable Instruments Platts. Platts is a fantastic oscillator that has like a ton of different uh, models and parameters that can be changed. And up until now, I've been changing all of those parameters by hand, just by like turning the knobs. Today, we're gonna to talk about how to modulate those parameters, how to change them automatically. Um, to that end, I've purchased two new modules, an LFO and an envelope generator. So yeah, let's get started. So the new modules you'll see here are Erica Synths Pico, which is an LFO, a low frequency oscillator, and Dreadbox Ataxia, which is a combination of an envelope generator and an LFO. This thing on the end is just a MIDI to CV converter. It's great, but it has nothing to do with anything we'll be doing this video, so you can ignore it for the time being. In the last video, I showed how Platts has a built-in envelope generator, which can be used by sending the gate output from the key step to the trig input on Platts. For the time being, that's what we're gonna use. So let's make ourselves a super simple bass sound. Okay, now I'm just gonna make a super basic sequence, uh, basically just a metronome to keep the beat. Okay, so we've got some notes, but it's very static. Every note sounds exactly the same. Platts has all of these parameters, so it'd be really nice to introduce some variation into the sound. So before we look at these new modules, uh, let's look at what modulation options we kind of have out of the box. I'm of course using the Arturia key step as my MIDI to CV converter. As we've discussed, we're already using the gate and pitch outputs from the key step. But there's another output on the back of the key step, and that is mod. The mod output allows you to send a control voltage based on the modulation wheel out to any of the other parameters. Even better, I can use the computer to sequence that mod wheel data. Now that I've got this baseline sounding the way I want it to, I'm going to record the audio so that I can move on to the next track. So far I've been focusing on the melodic side of Platts, but it actually has eight models that are geared more towards the percussive side of things. Again, I'd like to introduce some variations here. This time, instead of sequencing the mod values, let's try to use an LFO. An LFO is a low frequency oscillator that just provides a control voltage that you can use for changing parameters. This one, the Erica Synths Pico R&D, specializes in producing random values, which is very cool if you want to make something that sounds like glitchy and unpredictable. What I'm going to do is I'm going to record like 16 loops of this in Ableton and I'm going to pick the best parts. Since we've got like a percussive thing going on, why don't we try to add a snare sound? Okay, I'm just going to make a snare pattern. Okay, I think that sounds pretty cool. I'm going to introduce some variation here. This time I'm going to use the R&D's sine wave output, which just outputs a plain, regular sine wave. Okay, next I'm gonna add a bass drum. I think I'm just gonna use the same kit in Ableton that I used for my last video, so no modular this time. Okay, we got the start of a groove here. Next, I'm gonna add some plucky sounds. So far we've been using the Platts onboard envelope generator, and I'm actually gonna turn its decay time way down. I want to modulate the timbre. This time I'm going to use the Ataxia module. This thing can either be an LFO or an envelope generator or both. Uh, it actually has two channels. Okay, 
Okay, let's make that same pattern again, but this time with a different note, so that we have the beginnings of a chord. I'm going to use a different sound this time to add some variety. By the way, these little plus or minus knobs are called attenuverters. They control how much the control voltage changes the parameters it's patched to. If I turn it all the way up, it sweeps the whole range, and if I turn it down, I can get the effect to be quite subtle. Okay, finally, let's add a pad. So up until now, I've been using the onboard envelope generator on plats, which is great for plucky sounds, but sometimes you need a slow attack, like you might have on a pad or a violin sound or something. In order to get that, you need an external envelope generator, something like Ataxia by Dreadbox. In order to use it, we're going to unplug the trig input from plats, and we're going to plug our gate input, which comes out of the key step, into the trigger on Ataxia. Then we're going to plug the output from the Ataxia into the level input on plats. So yeah, I guess that's it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this very brief look at the world of modulating your rack. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, it'd be great if you could hit like. And if you haven't done so already, now is a great time to subscribe. I've got a bunch of videos on the way. So um, yeah, see you soon.